Hey everyone, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for spending some of your time here. Since it was a holiday week, in this video, I'll catch up on some additional footage released showing recent activities and news making in the Vehicle Assembly Building at the Kennedy Space Center. Exploration Ground Systems is getting ready to start building up the Artemis II vehicle, but there's still some decisions and other preparatory work before we'll see all the elements together on the mobile launcher in High Bay 3. December could end up being a newsmaking month too, and I'll catch up on where things stand heading into the final days of 2024 with what we're watching for Artemis 2 and 3 planning and preparations. Last week we saw stacking of the first two Artemis 2 vehicle elements on the mobile launcher in VAB High Bay 3. The left and right hand SLS solid rocket booster aft assemblies were placed on the ML vehicle support posts on November 20th and 22nd respectively. This past week we saw some additional stills and b-roll video taken from the zero deck of the ML after both aft assemblies were in place. This time-lapse video was shot from up on the fourth floor above the VAB transfer aisle before the lift of the right aft assembly on November 21st. We can see the East Park site where Mobile Launcher 2 construction continues and then the right hand aft assembly convoy appears with a KMAG transporter carrying the booster and pallet. As day breaks, the KMAG drops them off for the lift that occurred that night. A few walk around shots were posted at the end of last week before lift preparations got underway. And then these shots were taken from the zero deck of the mobile launcher after the lift, showing both aft assemblies on the hold down posts and the VAB platforms extended for future stacking operations. Those are the K level platforms which provide access to the first field joint between the aft center segments and the aft assemblies. There's still work to do around the bottom of the boosters too with the aft skirt umbilicals. We can also see the tail service masts, one of the umbilical plates, and some of the lines. The liquid oxygen umbilical plate is installed, but the liquid hydrogen plate connections are more sensitive, and that might not be installed until just before or after the core stage is mated to the boosters. Those two groundside umbilical plates have been hanging out with the core stage engine section during its production at the Machute Assembly Facility in New Orleans, which is where those are assembled. Those unconnected umbilicals are a good reminder that there's more work to do after the pieces of the vehicle are bolted together. The stages have to be plugged into each other and to the ground launch control systems on the mobile launcher, and then they will go through their testing and checkouts in preparation for a tanking test and launch. For these two pieces of the SRBs, we can see the aft skirt electrical umbilical housings. There is also an aft skirt purge umbilical line that will eventually be connected. The electrical umbilical connects the vehicle computers with the ground-based launch release system so that the ML umbilicals connected to the vehicle release and retract in response to the liftoff command. The SLS Fire 2 command is the launch commit command and that signal is sent from the vehicle computers to the SRB igniters and then continues down to the electrical umbilical as the booster ignition sequence is underway. The electrical umbilical relays the command to the launch release system. The purge umbilical, which we see here from the Artemis 1 launch, keeps the aft skirt and hydrazine systems that power the booster steering purged with gaseous nitrogen during tanking and launch. The forward outlook for stacking the rest of SLS and eventually Orion remains to be announced sometime after the widely anticipated but still unscheduled Orion heat shield decision and announcement. Artemis II Commander Reed Weissman posted in his weekly update that the whole flight crew was at KSC last week, and we saw some additional imagery of that taken on November 19th. That was the day that the first aft assembly was in the VAB transfer aisle ahead of its lift activities, and we saw pictures of the crew there, with the Artemis II SLS core stage still lying in wait for its upcoming activities. This shot is up on the 16th floor on the high bay 4 side, looking across the transfer aisle to the integration cell. This is what that looks like from a media event with the Artemis 1 vehicle back in November 2021. Generally speaking, folks like us who have camera equipment on those occasions are kept away from the loaded SRBs and other pyrotechnic equipment on the vehicle, or at least exposure time is limited. 
The crew also visited their spacecraft in the industrial operations zone of the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building in the KSC Industrial Area. Images like these confirm that the Artemis II Orion was still in the altitude chamber, probably still going through vacuum testing on the 19th. In a related news note, preparations are still being made to move Core Stage 2 into Boeing's new final assembly facility in VAB High Bay 2. It was anticipated that the platforms and tooling would be officially ready for that early in December, and Boeing provided this low-res shot. It's not clear whether all the platforms were in place when it was taken, but hopefully we will get better views when the stage is lifted into the vertical assembly, test, and checkout cell. But this is better than nothing during a holiday week for visualizing what it looks like. When the stage is broken over from horizontal to vertical, it will be the first time for this unit as a fully assembled stage. And there is some traveled work that needs to be performed after the stage is in that orientation. In other news and notes, one of those distant future items was announced on November 19th. NASA announced they intend to award task orders to both HLS providers, SpaceX and Blue Origin, to deliver large cargo to the surface of the moon in the next decade. As a part of the Sustaining Lunar Development Appendix P procurement, a human-class cargo delivery lander was defined for both HLS award winners. These HDL cargo versions of the Starship and Blue Moon crewed lunar landers will be developed, and these delivery awards being announced now will be as a part of demonstration missions for HLS cargo. The Starship demonstration mission will deliver a pressurized rover that JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, is developing. That is planned for no earlier than fiscal year 2032, ahead of the Artemis 7 mission. Blue Moon will deliver a lunar surface habitat no earlier than fiscal year 2033 as a part of the other demonstration mission that NASA intends to award. While I was asking for status about the Orion heat shield investigation last week, NASA Johnson Space Center Public Affairs for the Orion program said that the next titanium heat shield carrier had been shipped from a Lockheed Martin facility in the Denver metro area to the Kennedy Space Center and we saw a social media post on November 23rd showing that had arrived in the KSC area. The Orion heat shield is not only the base heat shield, but also back shell panels. However, it's the base heat shield referred to here. The base heat shield consists of a titanium carrier structure that attaches to the crew module structure, a composite skin, and then the thermal protection system avcoat blocks that are bonded to the composite skin. The compression pads referred to here protect the four attach points between the crew module and the service module. With that background, that base heat shield carrier that just arrived at KSC was earmarked for the Artemis IV Orion. Depending on what NASA decides to do with Orion base heat shields, that carrier could end up supporting Artemis II, III, or IV. There's still plenty of turkey leftovers to work on, but heading into the first week of the last month of 2024, here's some of the things I'm watching. Hanging over everything now is the Presidential Transition and Government Efficiency Review, at least until there's some clarity about plans and timelines. Thanksgiving week may be muted some of the Artemis-related chatter, but we'll be looking to see if there's any more talk about big changes for the government programs that existed before Beyond Earth Orbit Exploration was rebranded Artemis in May 2019. Commercial contracts have been awarded for pretty much everything announced or defined since then, and the termination rumors are about the pre-Artemis programs. Setting that aside, so to speak, there are still big Artemis announcements and decisions we're watching for. If NASA is going to decide about what to do with the Orion heat shield before the end of the year, there's only three work weeks left before the fortnight-long Christmas and New Year's break. But there's these other watch items that I assume we won't see or hear about until 2025. Between the Orion heat shield investigation and Starship development progress, there's a lot of uncertainty and doubt about the schedules for Artemis 2 II and 3 as 2024 ends. NASA says the Artemis II target launch date remains officially baselined as September 2025, 
but all the milestones between here and there are unclear or unspecified or both. The next Starship flight test is rumored to be right after New Year's, but similarly, the schedule for milestones after that is unspecified and unclear. The Artemis 3 target launch date is also still officially baselined as September 2026. Going by that official date, naming a flight crew for Artemis 3 would already be something to look for. Launch minus 18 months would be March, which is now only three months away. Leaving a crew announcement this late is suggestive that a more realistic date for Artemis 3 is more than two years away, as opposed to less than two years away. There's still no update to the official target launch date for the initial gateway elements either, now 11 months since NASA said they were reviewing that. The only public estimate for the initial gateway elements launch right now is December 2027. In the absence of definition to schedules, milestones, and roadmaps for Artemis 2 and 3, here's what we're watching. For Artemis 2, beyond the decision, there's now the question about whether that decision is the critical path. It's not clear when the Orion spacecraft will be handed over to EGS for launch preparations. A decision to fly as is would shift some attention to the Orion schedule. Last we heard, Orion vacuum testing was still in progress. If the spacecraft is back in the final assembly systems test cell, it's already December and there's still a decent amount of final installation work to complete before Orion is ready to begin launch preparations. With the expectation of some kind of announcement from NASA in December, we might not get an update on the status of Orion preparations until then. But that may be the critical path for Artemis II, as opposed to the heat shield decision itself. In terms of the SLS milestones, there's still the question of whether to get ahead with stacking and tanking tests and other work that could be at least in theory done independently of the first part of Orion launch preparations. For Artemis 3, beyond the question about the Starship roadmap, there's the question about when Orion and SLS will be ready to support that mission. That ties not only into production of the Artemis 3 flight hardware, but the timing of the Artemis 2 test flight. Those two big 2025 test flights are measuring sticks for Artemis progress, assuming that the incoming Trump administration chooses to continue with all of those plans. Right now, there are a few things we know to keep an eye on, and the rest, in particular the private development, will continue to be gradually dribbled out. And that's it for a light week of news where we're mostly looking ahead. Thanks for watching. Hope you and yours are having a happy holidays and hope to see you here again. Click on the like button if you found this video informative.